It's Revolution Radio Thursday morning. Glad to have you company here. We are bringing Northampton together. And in the studio with me t- today, I've got some guests. I've got Dr. Vanessa Peet and Dr. Nicholas Peet, who are joining me to talk about your cardiovascular health. Good morning, guys. Hello. Good morning, Chris. Thank you so much for having us today. No, um, really happy to have you here. So you guys are from Uniquely Created Nutrition and Health, which is a Northampton-based group of doctors who are committed to reducing cardiovascular deaths, which is it's a big problem at the moment, isn't it? It has been for a while, but everything that we can do to help people make the right choices, manage their lifestyle to reduce that has, has got to be a good thing. So um, how did you guys get together? How did you start doing what you're doing? Okay, so um, yeah, just one uh, small correction. So Nicholas is a registered um, GP um, and specialism in clinical nutrition. And I'm um, not a clinical doctor, medical sciences background, um, and a registered associate nutritionist and performance nutrition. Um, And how did we get into it was unfortunately a real life life event um, where Nicholas sadly had a small bowel perforation. Um, This happened in his early 20s Mm. um, and was a very you know impactive experience which kind of happened spontaneously overnight Uh, there was no real key you know signs that this was going to happen and um, he was admitted to the A&E as an emergency and had 30 centimeters of his uh, bowel resected Um, wow yeah so was, that must have been a major major thing to happen and very scary as well it was a major thing and i would say impactful painful is how i would describe it <laughs> yeah you know severe pain waking up one night and then you know it's completely out of the blue and when pain hits you in the middle of the night it's so shocking it's surprising and this is how cardiovascular disease you know sometimes presents i know patients who in the morning they wake up with chest pain and quite frankly the facts show us that on a monday morning in the morning, that's the most common time that people will have a heart attack. Can you believe Wow. That? What is it? Is it the stress of the week that's gonna come? The Monday morning rush? Um, so the, the, there's lots of theories as to why that is, but the fact is it still happens. The, the, the lower incidence or the less frequent day that it's like to happen is on a Saturday. Interesting. Is it because you come to the end of the last stressful week and you can Maybe. relax? So it's Thursday, okay, <laughs> Thursday sort of in the middle. Thursday's kind of like in the middle, but yeah. Monday is the, is the worst. So, but the point is that things can happen in the night, things can grab us, and that includes heart disease, includes small bowel perforation, which I had. But of course, that thing turned my life around because for years I told myself, or I had in my head, look, I need to get my life better. I need to be healthy. I need to be fitter. I need to eat more healthily. Did I do it? It was in my head. Something was telling me I need to do it. But did I listen to myself? Well, you're, you're a medical professional, so you, you know all this stuff, but it's a lot harder to put it into practice. You might know it, but it's actually doing it that's, that's the challenge, especially when you know, you know how busy medical people are. Indeed, yeah, we are, we are busy, but I don't think it's just unique to medics. It's, it's human beings, it's human behavior. Um, well, we live busy lives. We all have a rat race of life where you've got kids to look after, you've got businesses to run, et cetera, et cetera. You've got jobs to go to. And so sometimes we don't just stop and listen. And sometimes that reflection, that mindfulness, that peace that we need to have, that just that, that time just to, to stop from the rush, to listen to yourself and say, well, am I going to do something about this small voice inside my head instead of waiting for the big event to happen? So that big event happened for me and that started my lifestyle change. I've never used a drug or medication to heal myself from the Crohn's. It's all lifestyle driven. Mm. And that's 2008 right the way to 2023. Uh, 2022 into 2023 I, I hope um, and so um, and so that is a journey not only from from my perspective it's a journey of other people and it's something that we can do uh, before we have the event and that's n- no less true for heart disease mm. uh, we had World Heart Day on the 29th of September um, and it's a it's a marker point these days are marker points for us to jog our minds jog our, our thoughts the fact that ischemic heart disease you know is the second most uh, you know popular killer you know mm. of, of, of all people you know above that is actually dementia and alzheimer's disease just above but heart disease is a close follower it's interesting because you think that cancer is the thing that that's the most prevalent because you hear about it a lot but it's actually heart disease is the, is, it's a, it's second is right moment, up yeah, there it's really up there yeah mm. okay so what sort of things should we be doing differently to help us protect against that is it you know, avoiding stress and diet and that kind of thing? Well, 
<clears throat> well, I think this is where we come into seeing there's so many variety of factors, as you said, you mentioned mm. stress. Um, and when you think about life stresses that we may experience, sometimes they're in the work environment, sometimes they're in the home environment. That could be marital relations, family relations, um, and being able to Id- identify where the stress is actually coming from and actually seeking support. I think a lot of the time things are stressful that you don't realize are causing you stress because you see it as a positive. So it might be getting married or moving into a new house, having children, you know, a new relationship, changing your job. Um, winning the lottery all these things cause stress but you don't realize it because even though it's something that you're happy about it's that it's that upheaval and that turmoil that that just all adds to that overall amount of stress that you're experiencing absolutely i think that's such a true point i think you know when it's then wrapped into something that you really kind of love <clears throat> you can then really kind of overlook things um <clears throat> excuse me and sorry then, i did promise you a drink and i haven't brought you anything <laughs> no, don't worry i've got some water here um yeah so i think when it's something that you really love you can really kind of overlook things say for example your children you love spending endless moments with them well um <laughs> it, it can have its highs and lows moments um and you know some seasons of having children can be heavier than others in terms of when they're incredibly um young you know sleep plus nights um early waking mornings and when you're doing that with a work schedule um it can at points you know be incredibly incredibly difficult and i think therefore being able to have open um conversations is really really important you know it doesn't mean that the stress is not going to go away but being able to have a conversation with a family member with a friend with a colleague um and keeping that open environment of transparency wherever you may be um as a culture is really really important for us to be able to create that open environment so that those stressors don't build um, but instead you're able to kind of manage that stress um, and reduce the impact that it could possibly have for example as we're discussing today on our hearts and Mm. we often don't make that correlation we're not thinking about you know life stressors and thinking about our heart health and I think sometimes that's related to the fact that we're not seeing our heart the same way you would see if you fell and you grazed your knee Mm. and you ran you would see how inflamed that area was and how angry and how painful and unhappy happy it was whereas when we're thinking about the inside of our vessels we're not seeing when they're looking you know fatigued and when they're looking inflamed and you know when they're becoming clogs um clogged up yeah. we're not seeing that and therefore we can overlook those things absolutely and it's it's so easy to ignore it and kind of imagine that there's nothing to worry about but yeah. actually that complacency can be can be what what causes all, all of the problems well we're going to talk some more and give you some more practical steps to improve your heart health with uh, vanessa and nicholas shortly first of all though let's have some more music joel Corey and becky hill on revolution with history and we're still joined in the studio by vanessa pete and nicholas pete um from uh ucu uh who are doing some things this week that we're going to be talking about to give you some practical advice um to help with your your heart health and we've we talked a little bit about the importance of managing your stress levels um, where that can contribute to uh, cardiovascular issues and lots of other things as well. This is, you know, we're focusing on the heart, but like you're saying, Crohn's is something that can, you know, so many different conditions that can be a, a result of um, the lifestyle choices you make and improving that side of things. Mm-hmm. It's going to be better for your health overall, as well as obviously the the heart disease, which can be, you know, a major a major effect obviously fatal for for a lot of people so what are some of the other things that we should be be thinking about in terms of improving our lifestyle choices well there's several things i mean we've spoken about you know the mental side um there's also your food and your nutrition and we we commonly understand that things like saturated fats are not good for you Mm. making sure you have lots of um unsaturated fats and switching your oil perhaps from vegetable oil or corn based oil to something like olive oil or canola oil and having a diet rich of the avocados for example all those good fats which are in those foods but it's also thinking about your essential fats you know things like the omega-3 and omega-6 and most people don't know that Around about, around about 95% of people, the population, are out of balance with their essential oils. So they have way too much omega-6 in their blood and not enough omega-3 in their diet. Okay. Mm-hmm. And that causes a pro-inflammatory, so that's a, a state in the body which increases the likelihood of inflammation. And that problem is associated with 
with all inflammatory diseases. Um, and there's been several studies that look, look at this, it affects the brain, the, 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 the neurons, the cells that make up the brain. But of course, the, the, those cells are made up of fats. And if you have saturated fats, that's incorporated into your neurons, your, your brain cells, and saturated fats are stiff. It means that the neuron cells can't communicate as well. They're not as flaccid, they're not as fluid. And so the polyunsaturated fats and the omega-3 fats, they go in and they incorporate it into your, your brain cells and they make it more fluid. So it, re it improves your cognitive ability. Uh, it improves uh, from the anti-inflammatory point of view. If you have lots of omega-3 in the diet, it will reduce the, things, the likelihood of things like cardiovascular disease, like Crohn's disease and many other things. So it's really important that the balance of your nutrition is also mm. right. Um, and that's just fats by themselves. There's many other things you can do in nutrition to help. So with the omega-3, where's the best place to get that? Is that oily fish? Can you, is, it, is it better to take it as a supplement tablet or to get it in the food? Does it make any difference? It, it, oily fish is great. And, and if you have two pieces of oily fish uh, or one piece of oily fish and one normal fish per week, that will, be, that will fulfill a guideline. Um, but even if we've tested people who've had um, and, and studies have been done in people who have two oily fish per week, um, even Vanessa, you've done that test, haven't you? Uh, love, she loves salmon, eats salmon, <laughs> like it's a, you know, a very expensive fish and loves it <laughs> and, um, and eats lots of it. And nonetheless, you were still out of balance uh, when we done the balance test. So, mm. so most people would have to supplement and not everyone likes oily fish, not everyone has fish in their diet. And so those people would be at greater risk of imbalance. Uh, fish oils is the best place to get it. So, you know, when your mum used to give you cod liver oil as a child, yeah. that was a very wonderful thing that she was doing for you. And so, Do you think people realised it at the time? They were like, oh, this, this must be good for you because it's so disgusting. And they, they were <laughs> taking the tablets or drinking the, the literally drinking yeah. the oil from a spoon, but they had no idea how good it was. Absolutely. The, yeah. They had no idea. It's a crucial thing. So we'll give greater insight into that in terms of what the best supplements are and what the worst supplements are, and how to do differentiate between those things is a, is the balance really important then so it's not it enough is. to just take tons and tons of omega-3 you've got to get the balance with the other things as well you do have to get the balance right uh, probably you won't overdose with the, uh, the omega-3 even if you take a couple of capsules a day um, because as I say the, the balance is so out of balance mm. um, so yeah, it is, it is an important thing. Outside of that, there are other things that you can do. Uh, some people have a lot of issues with uh, cholesterol, for example. If your cholesterol is high and you don't want to necessarily go down a pharmaceutical route, then you can do things like buy plant sterols or stanols, for example. How would, how would you know if your cholesterol is high? Is there an easy way of being able to tell or do you need to get a cholesterol test with you your doctor? Def you definitely would need to get a cholesterol check. Um, and most doctors would be very happy to do that, particularly if you're the right age or if you have the right family history history of, of, of heart disease for mm. example but you probably know if you've just been eating loads of takeaway food and and just really not looking after your body the chances are you probably have got high cholesterol or at least it's something you need to be looking at well the well the first thing to do is to to stop stop doing the, the that junk food and stop eating this it's so tasty amount. though it is very tasty but <laughs> you know what the benefit of doing tests is that you realize it's, it can be a shock factor i have uh, individuals who drink huge amounts of coke huge amounts of sugar they come to me with palpitations of their heart and then you do their, their bloods, their sugar levels are out of scale. And I tell them, cut it out. You're having too much caffeine. And sure enough, their symptoms re reverse. And so just so by even if the you're drinking the, the diet soft drinks or the zero product, asking for a friend here, okay. it's still bad because it's got all that <laughs> caffeine in. The caffeine, the caffeine, the excess caffeine could be a problem for you if you're having an awful lot. <laughs> okay. um, but obviously using the zeros are, are useful because you're not going to have as much sugar in that or no sugar at all. Okay, fantastic. Now, if you're interested in finding out more, because we could talk about this for ages and we need to have you in again because there's so much to cover here but it's nearly 11 o'clock already. Um, you're doing a webinar tonight, aren't you, that people can jump onto? We are doing a webinar. Very excited about giving out lots of information. Mm. Um, we're going to cover, do a deep dive into things like the omega oils and get you balanced. in <laughs> sounds position. unpleasant, <laughs> having a deep dive <laughs> into got, oil. We've got, we've got other things about how you interpret even your cholesterol results, how you understand those. So it's going to be a very informative um, uh, uh, webinar. But beyond the webinar, we are offering a free place uh, 
um, for people who are yeah. eligible who join the webinar absolutely free to come to a, a Heart Health Day event at Software House on the 4th of November. Absolutely. And mm-hmm. then we'll have like specialists from the British Heart Foundation, for example, and other uh, practitioners who will give free information. It's no cost. At that day, will be people be able to get individual advice as well if they've got something that's, that's troubling them? I, I guess on the webinar as well, they can ask you questions, can they? On the webinar, certainly we'll have web chats. You can always post uh, questions. And of course, you'll be face to face with several professionals on that day. If indeed you're eligible, we want people who are ready to take action, people who are ready to transform their lives, people who are ready to move forward. Uh, and so there will be a, a eligibility criteria that we go through. But for those people who we do feel are motivated and really will benefit from the information that's going to be at that free event, we will welcome you in. Absolutely. We look forward to uh, seeing you there and um, giving you lots of uh, take homes that you can implement. That is brilliant. Thank you so much for joining me. If you're interested in either of those things, you can find out more details on our website. And there's loads of free information on there as well. If you go to revolutionradio.com and click through from the homepage, uh, you can uh, you can get a free PDF as well with loads of tips. Mm-hmm. And then that also gets you onto the, the mailing list so you can find out about all of the webinars and events that you guys are organizing to help you make those those better lifestyle choices. Thanks so much for joining me today.